Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. Uh, second show of the week. This seems to be a trend now. Let's see how long we can keep it going with two shows. Uh, with me, as always, is the wet to my willy, Rich Stambolian. Ooh, wow, I put this dirty finger in your ear, bud. Yeah, man. What's is that on, a dude? thing anymore? Are noogies and wet willies still a thing? <sighs> you know, we were weird I'll in the still... 90s. My brother is... <sighs> 13 years older than me and maybe once a year either he or i will give each other a wet willy just just to do to it. have a giggle just to have a giggle i know? do it to deacon <laughs> all the time i constantly give deacon wet willies you know what i gotta tell you there should be a documentary on weird middle school 90s bullying with noogies. early 90s bullying with noogies wet willies and wedgies indian burns indian burns yeah yeah that was a thing is that do you call it that anymore who knows Shh, why not I don't know. Do you call it that? I mean, what a weird thing. Like, you're grabbing mm. someone's skin. You're doing this thing to it. Bizarre. Bizarre. Also, did you We've have evolved. the th I grew up with a lot of, of Korean kids in my neighborhood, and there used to be a, the, the slap the wrist thing. The slap the wrist game, like, yeah. Like, the two fingers. Yeah. That was always a bitch, because somebody would always, like, do the big wind-up and, like, knock you out <laughs> for, like, the rest of the day. You're like, oh, my hand hurts. Very Korean. I grew up in a very Korean neighborhood. Kai Bai Bo. Did you play Kai Bai Bo? Oh, 100%. I think I still have those beads somewhere. No, no, no. That, was that, that's not Kai Bai Bo. Kai Bai Bo was uh, Rocks as a Paper. You're talking about this thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's, uh, that's uh, Welcome to uh, Flushing Men, where we talk about the culture in Flushing Queens. I'm Andrew Zarian. Mm -hmm. uh, second show of the week, as I said. Of course, Rich is with me. Uh, a lot of wrestling still continuing. The WrestleMania breakdown, uh, you know, things we haven't stopped. We're wrestling yet. I think that is this. No, we're actually is there wrestling every day now? Saturday would be the first day without any major wrestling. I think there's something going on on Saturday. Isn't there like some kind of TNA, like hard justice or long justice pay-per-view or some shit? <laughs> long, hardcore justice live long on, on pay-per-view presented by direct TV. No, I, I think Saturday would be the first day, but there's there's a ton of wrestling. And, you know, I got to tell you, for the most part, it's been positive. Tuesday, we did. Uh, oh, we did a show on Tuesday because we just wanted to do the fallout of the Raw after WrestleMania because it's such a big event and it was a non-event, which was extremely disappointing. I don't know how you felt about that. You listen, the we talked about it on Tuesday, but that Monday, I think we established it was a dud, big time, and uh, we got to move on. I think I honestly think Friday night SmackDown, tomorrow SmackDown. I have a feeling it's going to be rocking, dude. I tomorrow just SmackDown. have. Yeah, I kind of have a feeling like it's going to be challenge upon challenge upon challenge. You're getting Bianca Belair uh, first night as women's champion. You're getting uh, on her brand. You're getting the Roman fallout edge. Daniel Bryan. I kind of feel like Roddy's going to show up after last night's NXT. And I kind of feel like somebody else is going to show up, too. I don't know. I don't know about a major surprise, but I feel like it's going to be like a tight, tight uh, show. Yeah, man, I. Uh, uh, it, it, it's. It's interesting to me. The whole the whole concept of what they're doing is interesting. I, I do agree with you. I think Friday we're going to have a much better show than we had on Monday, and that'll be the conversation mm -hmm. all on Friday night and Saturday morning about how mm -hmm. they put on this much better product, and it's quite obvious now that the A show is SmackDown. I mean, we know that the A show is SmackDown at this point, right? You got Roman oh, yeah, Reigns there. So wherever he is, that's the show. But, um, you know, this may be the first real definitive moment where we're like, you know what? Raw is the crappy show now. You know, it's tough. It's I feel like I feel like the more people engage in streaming media and social media and just the consumption of a product, I feel like a Monday night just gets rougher and rougher and rougher, where I think a two hour Friday night show is way more palpable and digestible, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. Big time. Uh, I, I hate Friday. I hate to watch it on Friday. And by the way, we don't know what these SmackDown ratings are really going to look like. When right. things are open more up, you know, SmackDown in 2019 just went over to Fox and mm -hmm. they only had a couple of months of this. So and it was during the height of WrestleMania season. So these ratings that we're seeing for SmackDown, I don't know if it's going to improve when things open up more or it's going to decrease. Generally, Friday nights are not a phenomenal night to have your product on because people mm -hmm. are not home. Kids are not home. People go out on Friday nights, you know, so I'm, I'm curious to see how that changes. But I agree with you. SmackDown will probably be the better show here. But we did have two really good shows. We had NXT and we had AEW this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. NXT was a little slower than I expected it to be. 
mm-hmm. coming off of those two amazing nights. I mean, it was going to be slower. You can't you can't keep up, you know, what they did last week. But uh, unopposed Tuesday night, Rich, how do you think they did? I think they did pretty good. I saw the number and uh, I believe it was over 800,000. And I want to say it was their biggest show since Halloween Havoc. Am I right about that? Well, you're not counting last week's show. Right, right, right. I'm not counting last week's show because that was like kind of like the A pay-per-view. Like the paper pay-per-view style, right? Yeah. And the peacock transition and all that stuff. But I I really it was cool. It was cool to have NXT on a Tuesday. I watched like an hour and then I did other stuff and then I caught up like the next day. You know, like I yeah. felt more just just by doing because we have to do this show, I felt like it's more of an ease on my viewing nerves that we got Monday, great. We can Tune in and out of this Monday night stuff. Uh, Tuesday, awesome. Great. More palpable. And then Wednesday, great. We can watch AEW. And then Thursday morning, we can do this. And I feel like it's just a little easier. I found myself paying more attention to NXT this week, to be honest with you. Interesting. Because it was unopposed. You know, it's so much easier. Yeah. And, and, you know, it. it, it I got to tell you, Wednesday nights, I, I tend to lean to what when I my live watching. I tend to lead to AEW and then I watch NXT in the morning generally uh this was good to be able to watch both you know live which i enjoyed i thought it was a decent show the show began with carrying cross with a promo with scarlet uh i thought carrion did great what do you think of scarlet's really aggressive facial reactions do you think she needs to pull that back a little bit i like it i like it because it makes it it, bonkers (laughs) it's bonkers it reminds me of two things like all right carrying cross and scarlet have strong Lita and Edge vibes for me. Really? Um, yeah, I feel like they have that it factor as a couple on TV with the heavy and the heel. You know, like Lita was such a great heel manager or heel valet or whatever you want to call her. And I think Scarlett brings the same to the table. They, they're married. They have such chemistry together. Um, she also reminded me of, you ever see that Saturday Night Live bit with uh, Bill Hader and Kristen Wiig? The Vincent Price show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Kristen, I forgot the name of the actress, but Kristen Wiig does this character that it's just all gnarly facial expressions. And that's what Scarlet kind of reminds me of. The, uh, not the occult, the, um, what is it called? The, what do you mean? Like the witchery, not the occult. It's the, um, God. She's like, she's like arcane. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember. I can't, God, I lost the, the word. Uh, but she, the facial reactions are so nutty and he's like cutting this really good promo. I was like, I think it took it away a little bit from me if I'm going to nitpick it, but it wasn't uh, really, it was really good. Cross put Balor over as one of the greatest of all time. And, uh, Cross also put out a challenge to anyone who wants to step up. I thought it was a good mm-hmm. beginning of the carrying cross era for NXT. Hope he does not get injured this time and they're able to go yes. through with this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, did you enjoy the rest of the show? Yeah, it was fine. It was good. Uh, you know, we had a tag team match between uh, MSK defeating Drake Maverick and Killian Dane uh, to retain the titles. Lee pins Maverick to retain the title. Uh, let's see. MSK was booed here, even though mm-hmm. they're supposed to be baby faces, which I thought was weird. Yeah. Why did they do was, that? I don't know. There was a few. There, there was the live crowd because we heard. We heard chants later on in the night, you know, um, you know, it's a good that's a good question. I feel like people just love Drake Maverick at this point. You know, I think like so. A super underdog. And I think that might be it. Considering he was fired and rehired. And by the way, today's the anniversary yeah. of the uh, the covid firings. Wow. Crazy. crazy One year ago. Flies, yeah, dude. Yeah. Today uh, was the beginning. So uh, Imperium shows up again. Imperium, I think, is going to be like the crossover faction now. Let me see. Imperium. Wow. Hold on. Sorry. I lost this page. The whole thing just crashed on me. Read it, Rich, because I lost the notes. I'm looking so at we nothing. Have, so NXT was booed. Alexander Wolf comes out, confronts Killian Dane, Imperium attack, and then Imperium walk up the ramp. So they're kind of establishing, not without Walter, they're kind of establishing Imperium is going to be like the dominant faction now going forward because uh, Undisputed is done. Roddy moved on he's put his put his resignation in so now i think the concentration is going to be on imperium as the big bads on nxt yeah uh i think they're a good tag team i think this is cool and i think their tag team Mm -hmm. division is really heating up you know msk is is looking good i i 
for whatever reason, Dane and Maverick do something for me. It's a bizarre odd yeah. couple tag team, which I like. And obviously yeah, Imperium yeah. is Imperium is Imperium. Uh, they also did a Fallout exclusive footage from NXT uh, from the mm-hmm. unsanctioned match where Cole and O'Reilly are like dead. Uh, they were fighting at the hospital. They recreated the <laughs> opening scene of Rocky II. So good. Uh, Mercedes, and I, th- I think that's interesting. They're going to continue with that, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mercedes Martinez defeated uh, Jesse Camilla, Camilla with mm-hmm. Robert Stone. I want to say Roger Stone, but that is not the right stone. No, that's the penguin. Well, that's the penguin. Uh, <laughs> he really is the penguin, that man. Uh-huh. Uh, and then what was the... Okay, so I left the room and I came back. So why was Robert Stone giving money? To Martinez, I I totally missed that part. Guess what? I also left the room. Okay, and never came back. And never came back. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, this, from this, what I I lost, I got lost on this because it's not that you know, like everybody does a job, but like I'm not big. I'm personally not big on Robert Stone and Aaliyah. Um, so I kind of just like left. You know? Okay. All right. I did the dishes, uh, I think, for like five minutes. Because <laughs> she did the feed at NXT Cruiserweight Champion Santos Escobar to win the title. That's great. This That's great. was surprising. So, because she pins Escobar to win the title in a, in a really, really great match. And we were talking mm-hmm. about this a couple days ago where we were saying, you know, what's next for Kushida? Yeah. He's not going to be propelled in a main event picture. I, I mean, I, I just feel not, not to take away from anything of his ability. It's just not presented mm-hmm. in this manner. But... I do feel a title should go on this guy. And you said, you know what? He's been light heavyweight champion, and I, uh, he's been IWGP light heavyweight champion in NJPW. Mm-hmm. Why don't you put him in that division? That's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they did. Um, and I thought it was it was a cool win. It was out of nowhere. My favorite part about that was the visual at the end. It was perfect timing by Kashida's part where he got the belt and then rose out of the smoke at the top of the ramp. I don't know if that was planned or not, but it looked friggin' awesome. Yeah, um, and Finn Balor had cha- challenged him. Finn Balor had comes to the back and he's like, "I'm the guy." Blah blah blah. And Kashida and Regal are there, and you get you got also like strong. It reminded me of Kushida, uh, not Kushida. It reminded me of William Regal and Tajiri. Yeah, okay. And I'm like, oh, I kind of want to see this happen again with these two. You know, I heard, he was, I, I heard he was supposed to come back, Tajiri. Who, Tajiri? Yeah. Really? Oh, I love Tajiri. I, had, I mean, like, multiple times I heard this, which is weird. You know what was weird about this whole thing, though? So, Jordan Devlin essentially mm-hmm. challenges Kushida for the title, right? Yeah. But the way he does it is like, hey, listen. Uh, I got to go back home because of this whole COVID thing. Mm-hmm. So I got to go home. I don't know when I'm going to be back, but when I come back, I'm going to challenge you for this title. So is that, is that how you read it? Cause I that's read how it I read it. How did you read it? I read it that he was like, I was gone for a while and now I'm here and I'm going to take what's mine. Oh no. I heard like, he's going to go back and then like, okay. he'll come back at one point. I don't know. Maybe this summer when things are open. And then he went on this rant about Cuomo. He's like, ah, you know, de Blasio and Cuomo, the keep in the city. He became like a New Yorker. I don't know what happened. You didn't have that experience with it? It was, it was very strange. I had a The complete... edibles might have kicked at that point for me. <laughs> I had the opposite experience with that promo. <laughs> no, man. He just all of a sudden, the accent just changed, and he became like a guy from, like, Howard Beach. Ah, you, you know, Giuliani it... from, like, the 90s. He became a New Yorker from the 90s. You think if this was like the Attitude Era, they would call Jordan Devlin all head Jordan Devlin? The all head Jordan. He would come out with a balloon that's uh, his face and like just an inflated head balloon. That's what he would come out with holding it. Or Al Snow. Or Al Snow. Uh, <laughs> Tomasa Ciampa and Timothy Thatch- Thatcher promo. Thatcher. They're targeting yeah. MSK for the tag titles, which I really like. I, I feel like they're going to split this team up. This is the end of this program between the two. Um mm. Timothy Thatcher, he like he disappeared for a little bit. I, I, I'm into this. I'm into MSK and yeah, uh, yeah. Champa and, and Thatcher. I think they they pair really well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. They like. I feel like they're. It's it's weird to say that to Tomasa Champa and Thatcher are throwbacks because they're like quote unquote men. You know. Yeah. Like like I'll equate it to like a Dax from last night. You know, like this is how a man wrestles kind of thing. You know, if you do you get that vibe. Uh, with Thatcher, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've I've always like I've seen Thatcher wrestle endless amounts of times on the indies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I get why he's appealing. I just didn't see it at all until he went to WWE. To be honest, I think they put that polish on him, and it really 
Uh, yeah, dude. Th- that polish really helped them. You know, the th- polish. The he polish benefited either way. Yeah, yeah, straight up. Yeah. Um. There's a ch- there's a uh, there's a protest happening in our chat room by Bob Rowe. Hashtag free suncast because he's in my <laughs> basement right now. He's he's demanding help. Nobody help him. He's gonna live there forever. Do you at least give him like a little coffee cup so he can rattle the gates? With? He just rattles the gates. Yeah, he just I, mean, I just feed him hot dogs all day, like twelve oh, hot dogs a day. So all gross. eats. All so eats. Gross. When was the last time you had a hot dog? Uh, you know what's so funny? Uh, just made <laughs> hot dogs the other day for the kids. Oh, okay. And <laughs> I was like, all? no, no, no. I, I came home. I came home late. I was like, and I was uh, starving. And they were just sitting on the count on the counter. And I was like, these hot dogs don't look good. And I looked at it and I put it in the bun. I, I heated it up and I went to go mm. take a bite. And I'm like, yeah. And I just put it down. Slimy. It was, it was, no, it was like dried, you know, and like uh, shriveled up pruning. Yeah, no, thanks. I, no, thanks, I, eat, I only eat if, if I go to a Met game, I'll have like a Nathan's and maybe at like a barbecue. It's very much like a summertime thing for me. Like it's I need never to, in we the, need to go to a Mets game like now. Yeah, dude, you want, let's get out of here. I, they have a game today. They, I was supposed to go today, actually, and I, and I ended up having to go to work today. So I was going to go with Bob, but uh, I'm dying to see some baseball. Uh, what else do we have? Raquel Gonzalez promo. Dakota Kai introduced her, uh, introduced the audience to the new NXT cha- women's champion. She was mm. on the verge of crying. You could tell that she was very happy for Raquel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gonzalez put over EO as a great champion, which, you know what? I really like that NXT does this a lot. They will... Even though, I mean, the heels, baby faces doesn't matter. They will mm. put over that competitor. Always. So I don't know if this means Eo's going to go up. I don't know where <laughs> she's headed, but I'm, I'm interested to see this. So Frankie Monet debuted. Mm. Uh, and she's like, hey, it's Tuesday and I'm here to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and Raquel threatened to shove her dog somewhere. Uh, she yeah. was on the verge of like saying something really bad. I, I felt. think so. I think and so. Then, I think she should have just went for it. Yeah, she should. She should just gone for it. Uh, and then she, Frankie leaves. So <laughs> I'm interested to see how this plays out. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair also came out to celebrate Ra- Raquel. Uh, obviously, this is Triple H's mm. uh, gloating right here, where these are these are her, his projects. They've mm-hmm. built these three women into a a a star position and, and here we go yeah. you know when you could really tell when wwe wants to put you over they put you over really big oh, yeah. and this oh, says yeah. something about tony storm what the hell did she do you know that's a really good question i feel like she was just a byproduct of being overseas during covid much like jordan devlin i don't you know, know man you know they honestly when when they signed tony storm i would have told you that she would have been the bigger star out of her and Rhea, 130 percent I think Rhea obviously has the size and the look and the whole thing, but Tony came off as such a likable baby face. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's a time frame on that. You can't be that cutesy gimmick forever. I mean, look at Bailey, right? Bailey, that was mm-hmm. our big thing. Like, how do you, when Bailey is no longer able to make, do a believable childish gimmick, because yeah. obviously everybody gets older and it ends up being really silly then. Mm-hmm. how do you transition that into something else and i think they did a brilliant job with it i i was still sold on the bad girl bailey gimmick that you know yes where she like she's like no mom i'm gonna play video games you know like one of those but uh, i like this gimmick a lot tony storm kind of has that same kind of mm-hmm. appealing to children appealing to a younger it's a cutesy gimmick you know yeah. and uh, that was a big concern about how are they going to transition over they turned her into a heel and she came over i I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know why she's losing on openers of takeovers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Really bizarre to me. I I mean, that's something I I have not gotten an answer. But I mean, I wrote I wrote this as a joke to someone this morning. I was like, like, who the hell did she piss off? If you want to go deep conspiracy route, uh, it may it's uh, it's because uh, she's dating Juice Robinson. Oh, that's funny. And they hate juice. (laughs) I don't know. I don't, you know what's amazing? He's one guy that had a much better career post WWE. Oh, dude, yeah, he's he's right? like a hero in New Japan. Yeah, he, he totally different. I mean, good for him. Uh, what else do we have on this show? Uh, Pete Dunne in a promo says he's looking for a championship. Does this mean U.S. title? Does this mean NXT championship? We'll see. Roger Strong gives. Kushida. 
Roger Strong gives notice. Regal is in his office, met with Roddy and Marina. Uh, Strong handed Regal an envelope. Strong told Regal that he was done with NXT. Where is he going? SmackDown. I'm telling you, he's going to debut on SmackDown with uh, with Marina Shafir, and they're going to have some kind of feud. Who is... Yeah, a cuckolding angle? Is that what, what's next for them also? I would say Apollo is a good choice for Roddy. All right, that's pretty cool. I would love to see that, actually. Yeah. That'd be, uh, I think you could have good matches, man. Like, yeah. like Roddy... I feel like Roddy is... I, I say this all the time. Roddy could be like a super version of like Dean Malenko if they let him go nuts on the main roster. Yeah. Uh, listen, the comparison is really, really uh, prominent. I don't know how he'll do on the main roster. I hope they push him well because he's one of the best ones out there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we also had Isaiah Swerve Scott defeating Leon Ruff after losing clean. Ruff attacks Swerve backstage. That was great. That was a great yeah. match. Uh, Very good match. Swerve is awesome, man. The former Shane Strickland, like he's a big dude. He's getting bigger. His promos are getting better. They're putting a little more money into him. His his uh, entrance gear looks good. Uh, if it's one thing I got to say about like the promos on NXT for the most part, or even like Monday Night Raw or like some guys on AEW, is I feel like a lot of these younger dudes and women would benefit from taking acting lessons or just almost emulating characters in different films right because it seems to me like all the promos on nxt for the most part sounded exactly the same it has the same cadence it has the same bullet points you know like and the weird thing about that is you know if you're on tv you have some kind of big personality behind you that got you to where you are right yeah but I think it's just weird. Like, listen, how many people do you know and that I know that we hang out with? Guess what? Everybody talks friggin' differently. Of you course. know, nobody speaks the same. And I feel like that samesy, samesy delivery is just it's sometimes when I listen to it, it takes me out of it. Yeah. You know, wrestling tends to do that a lot. They like to do that mm -hmm. with their promos. Like, listen, the 90s, even though everybody had a different delivery, everybody said the same thing. The fact of the matter yeah. is, you know, pillar to post. I, I do find it interesting when. The, the promo styles differ so well, mm -hmm. uh, so differently, where you normally, you're right, NXT, every, it, it's, it's interesting to me compared to the main roster. Main roster promos are terrible, atrocious. I think, I think that's a byproduct of being under such strict TV time sometimes. You yeah. know, uh, where, by like, the way, unless, unless you're like, you know, one of the good ones, unless right. you're, then, you're a guy that they love. You have like a little leeway to go over, you know, but everybody has like this insane, like, all right, you got to look at camera one. You have three, you have 33 seconds to get this out, you know, and then like somebody hands you a piece of paper with a change on it. And you're kind of like, you kind of have to like, all right, I can memorize these three lines and let me go out there and do it. So yeah. it's a little weird sometimes, you know? Yeah, um, it is weird. What else do we have? Uh, we got the main event, Ember Moon, Shotzi Blackheart, Dexter Loomis, Bronson Reed, uh, defeating the way everybody, Johnny Gargano, Candice LeRae, Austin Theory, and Indy Hartwell in like a big intergender tag team match. Um, it I think the, the big angle here was, uh, Indy Hartwell trying to get busy. She's trying to get it on. And I kind of uh, like that, yeah. that tweak to her character. Um, I also like the, I also feel like Johnny Gargano is really coming into, coming into this heel persona that much better i am not a fan of it i gotta tell yeah. you not a fan of johnny gargano's heel heel character i i think he's such a great baby face where i it just i can't believe mm. it's too hokey you know it's too put on because he's such a nice guy mm. so i have a very difficult time connecting to that character the whole that whole way thing i have a difficult time connecting to it but that's just me I don't mind it. I, you know, it's funny that you're like, oh, he's such a nice guy. But I'm like, imagine if he was like truly like a piece of shit. A piece of shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Like backstage, just the <laughs> biggest piece of shit. So NXT did eight hundred and five thousand. I don't know if this is good or bad. Um, I think they did a point twenty, uh, point two two in the demo, mm. which is uh, they could do better, obviously. Uh, Tuesdays are, I think they're, they're on a finite. I, this'll be the average. I think they will be between 800 and 880 on average. 
depending right. on what that match is. Occasionally, you know, if they do like a mega show or like a takeover style show, maybe they'll be in the nines. But I think this is where we're going to sit with NXT for a little bit. I think this is a mm-hmm. positive I see growth for them. I see more yeah. opportunity to do some cool stuff when you're not programming against another product. Mm-hmm. You're, you, you know, maybe they could go back to how it used to be a little bit. They, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm reading into this too much, but I feel like on commentary, there was like a dig on the Bullet Club stuff. What did where- they say? The three ladies in the ring with the championships, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, and Raquel Gonzalez. I think Beth, Beth Phoenix made the comment, these are truly who run the wrestling business. Interesting. And I'm like, huh, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that's like a dig or like that's just like you, like it says, this is Triple H gloating, you know? I think it was Triple H gloating more than anything. But again, that's, uh, a, that's a weird conspiracy theory in my brain. Yeah. Uh, before we go into AEW, I want to thank our sponsor this week, and that's Canvas Theory. Great product. It, listen, I'm a big fan of wrestling apparel, uh, but I also don't want to wear a wrestling shirt every time. Uh, that, that's kind of so in your face. Well, listen, I, I, I think sometimes I just want to be subtle, and this is awesome. They have a great set of snapbacks inspired from American pro wrestling, Japanese pro wrestling, and obviously Lucha Libre. Uh, you can go check it out at canvastheory.com. And if you use the offer code MATMEN, you get a discount. You get 10% off your first purchase with Canvas Theory. Canvastheory.com. Uh, let's talk about AEW. Started off with a bang. A uh, really interesting promo. They came off mm-hmm. with uh, a promo to begin a backstage recording, obviously, of the Young yeah. Bucks talking about why they did what they did last week. Uh, first opening match, big match, and I'm curious how this affects ratings. I like that they start things off with big matches now on AEW. You're not just getting the typical, uh, you know, opening match. You're getting a, a a world title match, a AEW Tag Team Championship, World Tag Team Championships on the line. Young Bucks, mm-hmm. Matt and Nick defeated Death Triangle, Pac, and Ray Phoenix. Great opener. Lasted about 30 minutes. So good. So good. Did you enjoy the match? I did. I very much liked it. It was a really good match. Everybody uh, looks so good. It, you know, like there's so many takeaways you can make from that match where you look at you look at a guy like Pac and you're like, yo, WWE sat on this dude for so long and did nothing with him. Do you and think they could have done something with him? I mean, not not that his own ability, but the way WWE thinks. Do you think they could have ever done something big with him? I think he was on the way to doing something when he was calling himself like the king of the cruiserweights, you know, like yeah. that, that little personality tweak was awesome. And then all of a sudden, like, blah, you know, like they yeah. really could have, they could have pushed this guy to the moon. He could have been a contender. He could have been like another Ray Mysterio. I think, you know, the guy's got a personality and he's got a move set. He looks amazing, you know, but you never know. It could be just that one person in the back. Who's like, you know, I don't like this guy. I don't like his ears. And that's it. You're done. Yeah, like something weird like that. And then, you know, the Bucks have been doing this for so long. Their new heel tweak is good. Ray Phoenix has nothing but an upside. You know, oh, like big that time. dude, he's from another planet, man. Like, and I like I do like how every week this guy comes out and does something completely different and insane, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it was it wasn't bad. It was a good opener. It was a really good opener. Yeah. Uh, what else uh, do we have here? Uh, we had Jade Cargill uh, having a kind of like a return match with Red Velvet. Great second match. Great outing for these two. I want to, you know, they're rookies, right? Like this is yeah. Jade Cargill's like third or fourth match and Red Velvet just got signed to this deal. They look good. They worked their spots very well. It was very entertaining, you know, nice and quick too. Uh, I did not love this match. Uh, mm-hmm. It was okay. I, I think that Red Velvet, I think Jade looked okay. I think Red Velvet, uh, to me, I would say she was a little worse than Jade. But I think there's a lot of upside with Jade Cargill. Tremendous. Oh, absolutely. She looks amazing. I feel like, you know, on entrance alone, I do feel like WWE would look at that replay and be like, ah, we could have totally kept her, you know, because they had her. Uh, do drills, I think. She had like tryouts and, and like some kind of thing at the performance center for a while. Yeah. And I don't know what happened. Maybe it wasn't for her. Listen, it's not for everybody. Anthony Go- uh, Gogo with the factory mm-hmm. defeated Cole Carter, one with a, a, a gut punch. I don't know. What do you think of Anthony, uh, Anthony Gogo? 
You know what? I think he's a good pick for a rookie. His pr- I like his promo style because he's got that like dirty British delivery because he's like a British guy, right? Yeah. Um, the match was okay. It was fine. You know, like the gut punch is interesting. I feel like whoever the guy he wrestled, Cole Carter, sold it like nobody's business, you know? And I think they're building up. They want to build up the factory as like another faction, you know? Yeah. And we'll see what happens. I know you're not a big fan of QT Marshall. Uh, it doesn't do anything for me. It's fine. It okay. is what it is. Uh, Chris Jericho with Sammy, Sammy Guevara. I was going to say Sammy Callahan. I don't know why. Sammy Guevara defeated Dax Hardwood with Cash Wheeler. Special guest enforcer Mike Tyson. Uh, this ended up becoming a, uh, a schmoz at the end uh, where Tyson got involved physically and uh, Jericho inducted him into the inner circle. I'm curious what happens with the Tyson stuff now. Do they lead up to something else with Tyson? Uh, They explained that Jericho apologized to Mike Tyson, and that's why things are fine now. So at least there's continuity there. You know, they're continuing it. They they just didn't forget what happened. I also like how Tyson took a page out of uh, civilian clothes Kenny Omega and came out with, like, salmon shorts and uh, just, like, a white (laughs) T-shirt. I know. Like looking like a normal dude. This wasn't mm-hmm. good. I, I mean, not bad, right? Hard hitting match, man. I love yeah, it. I, I, I like it. I like the dichotomy of the show. And I do think that has there's a lot of stamp of Jericho on this. And he's mentioned this like on his podcast and like several interviews where, you know, AEW hasn't sometimes has an issue with like, well, this is the style we're gonna wrestle and these are the spots we're gonna do. And sometimes there's overlap. You know, Mm. I think this was a good example of, okay, you had your 30 minute tag team match. They're doing like a modern style pro wrestling match where nobody sells and everybody's a superhuman. You have your ladies match, right? You're like almost your David and Goliath type match. You have the showcase for the rookie and then you have a hard hitting wrestling match. Yeah, I think that's that's what it was, you know, with like the interference and the fights and all that stuff. They got everybody on TV. It was what it was, and I really enjoyed it. And I like that, you know. Like, uh, I also think that um, Cash, he, did he, he, either he got jaw jacked a bit, or he sold it very well. He sold it really well. Yeah, looked brutal. That, yeah. that punch from Tyson looked brutal. Yeah, because listen, he's. I mean, obviously, listen, Tyson knows not to hit you, but if he slips, mm-hmm. because he's going in, you know, if he yeah, slips, dude. you're you're getting hurt. Uh, Chris he, Stratlander. One more thing about Tyson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, like. He's he's not throwing a worked punch, you know, like he's st- 54 years old. This dude is still super, super fast. And it's it's almost like he they are probably tell him, like, if you punch me, you punch me. That's it. You know? Yeah. Very good. Uh, Chris Stratlander's back in action. Defeated Amber Nova. Uh, she looked great. She looks mm-hmm. really in shape. Uh, mm-hmm. The boop thing is a little much. I know not, it's part I'm- of her thing. You're not a fan of it. I know. I'm okay with it. I I just think like it's it's one of those character tweaks that needs to go, you know. Yeah. If it's backstage, fine, but like it's too many. Like in the it, ring, for me, for my money, not great. You don't care. For, you don't care for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She looked good. Uh, she was out for a long time too with the injury. Mm-hmm. It's quite. It was a significant injury. So good to see her back. Main event TNT Championship. Darby Allen defeated Matt Hardy in a false count anywhere match. Matt worked super freaking hard here. He really, he worked his ass off. I mean, this match was designed for Matt Hardy to kind of brawl and do whatever he's doing. Want to get your thoughts on this? Dude, love the match. Um, Darby Allen is such an interesting character. He's very enigmatic and like, you know, there's there's a mystery about him, which is good. Um, At one point during the match, I was like, holy shit, Matt Hardy's like 25 again. Like, look at him go, you know, like it, yeah. like it looked like a switch got flipped and he was like, oh, this is this is how I made my bread and butter. And then I think at that point, he really started like potatoing Darby Allen. <laughs> at least that's what it looked like, you know, guys, before we continue, submit your questions in the chat. We're going to do our best to answer them uh, in our Q&A mm-hmm. segment. Uh, you know, there, there is some criticism here. Maybe the ending was a little too convoluted. There was a lot of involvement. Sting got involved, private party and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, Stin didn't look like he knew what to do, to be honest with you. He, he was like, okay, who? what am I doing? Where he am I going? a little confused. <laughs> Just looking to the left and right. 
Uh, all right, and that's how it went off. I mean, exciting, hard-hitting. Darby Allen's still the TNT champion. Mm -hmm. uh, people are very into Darby Allen. I, I had a chance to talk to one of my friends. He's mm -hmm. not a wrestling fan, but his son is a wrestling fan now, and he's young. He's like 14 years old. Freaking loves Darby Allen. Um, how did you feel about them? Do you like Darby Allen? I'm okay with him. You're okay with him. I feel like he's sometimes he's not your cup of tea. He's sometimes he's not. I, I, I have a, I have a very difficult time when there's a size issue discrepancy here. You know what I mean? Okay. I thought and it was he's because not, you hate dirty punk skater kids. Oh, I hate dirty punk skater kids. No, here, here's my issue. Like <laughs> I could get behind Daniel Bryan, right? Fighting Brock uh -huh. Lesnar and possibly winning. Like that's the smallest I could get behind. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have a very difficult time getting behind Darby Allen being able to defeat a guy like like Brian Cage. Well, what about like Adam Cole, man? They're probably the same height. No, no, no. Darby's smaller, no. You think so? I think so. I feel like they're about the same height, dude. I, I don't know. We'll see when Adam Cole goes to the main roster and he has to fight guys guys like, you know, Braun Strowman. Um, I got a question for you about the end of AEW. Yeah. Did you feel like they were going to open the limo and somebody was going to pop out? I did think that. Right? Like, that promo was excellent, by the way, at the end. And I love how the Young Bucks dressed like two jerk-off Shawn Michaelses. <laughs> with, like, the backwards, like, leather, like, Kango hat and, you know, like, Kenny uh, talking smack and Don Callis super kicking the cameraman. So, Great can, ending. I, can yeah. I ask you this? So, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to ask you this now. Um. You know, mm -hmm. last week I was critical of the ending uh, yeah. of of I was going to say Nitro. Jesus, I was very critical of the ending what? of Nitro last week. Uh, uh, I, I, I had a because I said Nitro because I compared this to like a 1999 wrestling ending in Nitro mm -hmm. where you have two people having a match, beating the crap out of each other. And immediately at the end, they mm -hmm. just forget about the fact that they just beat the shit out of each other for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And now they hug. I hate when they do that immediately. Like I yeah, I'm fine with, you know, doing the tease. Maybe they don't touch, uh, you know, and then you're like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, they never they never touched each other in the match. I have an issue with that. Um, mm -hmm. Darby's built at five foot eight. Cole's built at six foot. There's no way Cole is six feet tall. I'm just putting it okay. out there. Um, I, I don't like when they do it that close. And the whole match, you know, for weeks they were leading up to Darby. Like they were not alluding that the young bucks are conflicted in any way. Mm -hmm. They hate Don Callis, and they teamed up. They hate the uh, Gallows and Anderson because Gallows and Anderson have been dicks to them. Kenny has kind of separated himself from them. So all of a sudden, what the mm -hmm. hell happens? You you form the team. You know what? I'm cool with it. It's very convoluted. Do you think they're gonna call? They're gonna start calling themselves like the Bullet Club? The Bullet, like, bullet, like bullet Club know. and the Elite. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think I think they're still probably gonna turn on them. You know? Oh yeah. Something is going to happen. I thought we would see it this week where maybe Gals and Anderson almost cost them the match and you could kind of continue that weird thing between them. But I don't know. I, I'm very curious what other people felt about this because I haven't mm. seen that much criticism of it. So maybe this is just my own opinion and that's fine. Uh, it'll stay in my head. Uh, yeah. I, I really haven't gotten a good sense of what people thought. It seems like everybody's kind of jumped over that whole hurdle and now we're into well, like, well, they're, they're back together. This is pretty cool. I, I think so too. I um, also, I believe it was Matt Jackson in an interview this past week was questioned about the number of factions in AEW. And we've talked about this last week too, you know, and I think having them as a group solidifies that faction, right? And there's a million factions on AEW television. I believe what Matt said was, listen, New Japan's been doing this for 40 years and it works. It's a way to get everybody on camera. North American fans aren't used to it, but the factions are pretty much here to stay. Yeah. I there, there has to be a balance. I get it. There has to be a balance. I, I'm fine with the factions. What I mm. don't like is that it's very crowded. Like, they're always out. You know what I mean? So, like, there's an... They are able to use the possibility of run-ins and in interferences yeah. way more. And I don't necessarily feel like that's that's a good thing to use that so often. Like, the schmas right. at the end with the, the whole, you know, pull apart in the brawl between two factions. They tend to go mm -hmm. to that a lot. Uh, that's my criticism yeah. of factions. 
All right. I'll, I I could see that, especially like the last night's AEW show was loaded with your factions, right? Like everybody made an appearance at some point. No, Hangman in the Dark Order. Uh, we skipped over the Taz um, trying to recruit <laughs> Christian Cage thing, which I thought oh, was yeah, more yeah, funny, yeah. which I thought was more funny than serious, you know? Um, and Christian Cage got laid out by Will Hobbs. So that's going to be a cool match that we're going to see. But I believe the show went to commercial with Hobbs standing over Christian cage with hook in the background and Taz in the background, you know? So mm. like there's your schmoz faction. Yeah. Um, Matt Hardy's, uh, what's, uh, what's Matt Hardy's guys called the HFO or something like that. The Hardy I, foundation, I Hardy some found shit. It, I guess. So you have like butcher and blade came out throw. I loved how butcher wailed that trash can at Darby, by the way, it looked like he was waiting to do that like all day. I was like, damn, this looks like fun. All right. Um, yeah, we got about 20 minutes. By the okay, way. good. All right, let's do uh, Q&As, boys and girls. Submit your questions in the chat, and we'll do our best to answer them. We also have some other notes here. Uh, raw ratings, they did 2.026, up from 1.7 million. Obviously, it was going to be up because it's a night after WrestleMania, uh, right after night after WrestleMania. And a lot of people expect there to be a big debut or a surprise or a hot angle. They did absolutely none of that. And, and it just sucked. Uh, there's no, I would like to meet the person that thinks it was a great show. Because you know there has to be one out there. That somebody oh, thinks this is this Hardy, the Hardy family office. That's what it's called. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm curious who that person is and what you enjoyed. Because there was nothing enjoyable about that show except for... How dumb, how dumb Matt Riddle is now. Oh, he's on the team, bro. Dummy he's on squad. Team Dummy. Dummy Squad, man. He's on it. We I decided, who else to... were you putting in there? Oh, that, yeah. I texted, this is the first thing I texted Andrew this morning, too. I was like, I got who fills out the Dummy Squad. So it's Braun Strowman going backstage and going, who wants to join my team of dumbasses? Matt Riddle, number one. All right. What about you, Mace? Oh, yeah. You're down for the Dummy Squad. What about you? Are you putting you? Mace in there? Mace, what about you, T Bar? We'll call you Face and T. This is my A team of assholes and dummies. I love it. Nitwits. Nitwits. What did Archie, what did Archie call Edith on uh, All in the Family? Uh, I can't say that on the air. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was uh, something close. Dingbat. Dingbat. Dingbat, yeah. <laughs> Dingbat. Archie Bunker from Astoria, Queens. Uh, John Moxley also had a wild week. He got turned on by the Young Bucks last week. He uh, lost that blood sport against Josh Barnett, which was really good. And then he challenged mm -hmm. Nick Cage at the end of spring break on Friday. And also, Yuji Nagata has accepted his challenge for the IWGP US title. Busy guy. Busy, busy, busy guy. Busy, busy guy. All right. Q&A time, boys and girls. What do we have? All right. We got Corey Richmond saying, why is AEW not promoting the Impact pay-per-view with Omega versus Swan on April 25th, right around the corner? And what are your thoughts on Eva Lisa's release? Let's try to say that three times fast uh, uh, from AEW. The, uh, maybe they'll promote it this week on TV. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, do you want to? I, it, it's weird, right? They got an they got an open work relationship, obviously. Mm -hmm. But do you want to start promoting a pay per view that you know every week? I think we'll see that this week. Uh, obviously, there has to be some line put together here where it's not just let's let's promote Impact every single week on TV. I think there's more promotion on the Impact side for AEW than there is on the AEW side. But we'll see what happens with this. Uh, I believe it's April twenty fourth. So this is going to be interesting for Kenny Omega on how this mm -hmm. plays out because he, if he wins that Impact Championship, uh, you know you're beginning this belt collector thing. He still has the AAA title, right? Yeah, I think he's still the Mega Mega Champion. He's not coming out with it, which I'm surprised. Yeah, very well, curious. Maybe about that. he'll let's let's maybe wait until he. Do you think he's going to beat Rich Juan and take that championship? He's going to stand tall. At I think so. I think so. I think that's a good move. I think that that does something to it because now he, you know, he could hold on to those titles for a while and then finally lose it to somebody, you know, and start losing all those titles. You could start with impact and it'll put some, it'll put some good heat on the, on the guy that beats him. Uh, yeah. Ivelisse getting released. Not surprised. Are you? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. I feel like it was bound to happen after that whole flub 
with uh, Thunder Rosa on national television, you know, yeah, that like, was not no good. selling and all that stuff. Who knows, man? Like, obviously, there's two sides to every story. But according to Ivelisse and her social media accounts, she's saying it's not her fault. It's backstage politics. And but she, she's had a problem in every locker room that she's ever worked in. So exactly. But she's also said it's all because of backstage politics. Yeah, it's backstage. politics. I mean, she 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 obviously has a has a she's a difficult person to work with. Seems that way. Yeah. Um, Tim Anger asks, will Cole move up anytime soon? And will Roddy and Cole get buried after a few months? Um, I, that's, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It, it makes me nervous because these guys are so good and mm. they tend to flub guys that are that good. It's yeah. not, it's uh, unless you're, you're this gigantic thing. By the way, Vince has totally gone back to his trope of gi- giants Big boys, baby. Big boys. Uh, that's his thing now. That's what we're going to see more of. Uh, there's obviously a direct uh, direction this company is going. Because if you look at all their champions and you look at what it looks like, these are giants. And who they're bringing in, these are giants. I, I, I think the days of the smaller guy being a top guy in this company are slowly getting pushed back a little bit. Not saying it's going to go away. Pure talent always works. But they're going with size again. They're so headed bizarre, that way. Right? They love flip flopping on that, you know. It's been a couple of years, so they haven't done it. So now they have an opportunity. They signed a lot of big guys. Uh, Omos, great example of a giant. Uh, Bobby they, Lashley, they, Bobby Drew. Lashley, Drew Roman's a big dude. Randy's a big dude. I mean, you're <laughs> you're seeing all these guys. Where how do you? What do you? Do? Brock Lesnar when he comes back. Abacado. Uh, who? Dabakoto, yeah, Dabakoto, he's a big dude too. So you're, you're Martinez, another I mean, uh, big guy. Yeah, yeah, big dude. So yeah. they're going with size again, mm-hmm. and that's fine. Uh, but how will this play out for a guy like Roddy or or Cole? It, it it's a little. Um, I don't know. I, I'm. I, it concerns me a little bit when you see that as a direction. But these guys are pure talents. No matter what, no matter what they do, they'll be they'll be great oh, yeah. at it. I, I got a question for you. Yes. Do you think the transition going back to big dudes is because they see the writing on the wall with live shows and they're like, well, if we're going to do live shows again, we need the spectacle of giant men. Um, so in the past, when I've asked about this, uh, I was told mm-hmm. that, that like their focus is always big guys, always. But yeah. Uh, they've said that, you know, the big issue that they face with getting guys over like a big guy is that everybody works like a smaller guy now. Even mm. your big guys are doing stuff that you would never see. So it, it there's no separation like a Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is not a small guy. You know, he's heavier. Yeah. He's he's at least six feet tall. And mm-hmm. but this guy's wrestling like a cruiserweight. Yeah. With swantons and, and cannonballs and planches and dives i mean this guy wrestles like he's 180 pounds so when you have that happen and big guys are doing it kind of takes away from the smaller guys and what makes them special because they're smaller so they're able they're more agile but i mean seth rollins he is not a small guy whatsoever and this guy wrestles example perfect example he's 200 and something pounds he's over Mm -hmm. six feet tall uh he's 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 tall uh, what how tall is seth rollins let's see i want to say like six two six three he's he's wide up top you know he's got like that dorito body like big shoulders like thin legs he is six one he's built okay. at six one so i don't know how accurate that is by the way roman reigns is six three john moxley is six mm-hmm. two so you have guys that are all six feet tall so yeah. uh you know he's two seventeen six one according to i guess imdb so fluctuates up and down obviously but you know normally he would have been i mean what's funny is that he would have been a cruiserweight 20 years ago he would have Isn't been too insane? small 20 years ago so we've we've kind of changed the bar but i know i think that yeah. what they're trying to do now is separate these bigger guys from the smaller guys in 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 actual you know large size <laughs> rather than it being like a little taller gang cross another big dude how tall is he six three six four S- six four maybe i think he's six four fascinating let's see let's uh let's six four yeah six feet four and don't forget braun captain of the dummy squad braun Strowman, captain of the dummies nine feet tall (laughs) nine feet tall yeah uh any other questions yes uh we can take a few more here okay um what are your thoughts on nxt's new logo 
Uh, do you think Rich? This is a stacked one. Uh, we're, we'll we'll do this bit by bit. This is from Rated C. Where what what are your thoughts on NXT's new logo? With the wings. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I I don't know what the hell it is. What is that? The skull and the wings. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it too. But what? Yeah. Why? What is it? What does it mean? I need a change. I'm moving to Tuesdays. You got to put a little polish on that old car. Okay. You know. Right. Uh, any any chance of seeing Rich Swan popping up in AEW? Rich Swan, uh, I would like that. Why not? I like that too. Yeah. He's a champion, right? He's him and Kenny have a match. He could, uh, you know, like that Wednesday before that pay per view. That's the prime time for Rich Swan to show up, right? Yeah, big time. Uh, how is Raw a three hour show with a stacked roster, but mostly only use some of them for main event and nobody's booked well because it's raw. Yeah, good answer because it's uh, raw. I, 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 I think it's so abysmal. They're booking. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's really <laughs> abysmal. It, it bothers me because it's unbelievable talent on that card. And I really, it's all over the freaking place. Do you think that's because abyss is backstage handling the booking? I, I, abyss, the character. Yeah. It's abyss a, the man. He's like, I'm going to make this abysmal. Abysmal. Uh, Everything is abysmal. See. Chris Farrell, do you think Hangman versus Kenny is the next move for the AEW title, or will they hold off pulling the trigger a bit longer? I would hold off, no? Yeah, totally hold off, dude. Totally hold off. Like, you know, Kenny's nobody his own ever, thing. Nobody ever challenges again for the title. You know, John Moxie is the first one that had a secondary title shot. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had... Yeah. Uh, interesting to me. Kenny's being very protected right now, right? He should be. Yeah. Because they flubbed uh, them is, for a while. It's a good thing, I think. You know, And like again, with that promo at the end of the night where they were like, well, we're the characters you wanted, so if you don't like it, that's on you. Yeah. Um, Ronnie H. asks, what do you think the numbers will be for NXT this week and AEW staying the course on Wednesday? Well, we got the NXT number. It's 8.05 for NXT. Uh, that the the AEW thing is very interesting. A lot of, I mean, mm. I saw some people like, oh, it's gonna get over a million guaranteed. I'm like, guys, let's be realistic. Yeah, let's be real. <laughs> the, the, I don't, I don't think they're gonna be at a million. Uh, you know what? It would be great if they're at a million every week for them. That'd be phenomenal. I think we're looking at more like the 800s to to the 900s. You know, if AEW is yeah. doing low eights, they'll do high eights. Uh. The, <sighs> This week, you know what? The, we're a couple hours away from it being released. So by, by, probably by the time you hear this, the numbers are going to be out. I'm going to guess 920. Okay. Right? I mean, it would be it would be uh, freaking great if they, they hit over a million. Somebody made a joke in the chat. I'm like, what? AEW is going to do 1.3 million? I'm like, no. <laughs> AEW's, I, I mean, that if they do, that that's I would be shocked. I'd be really shocked. I'm- I'm going to say 986. Like this close. 986? All right. Yeah. No, that's my number. I'm I mean, I be, they're, they're over a million with DVR, like plus, yeah. you know, for the week. If you add all their digital streaming, you know, services and you add uh, all, all, everything else, DVR, they're over, they're around 1.2, 1.3 million weekly. That's not bad at all. Yeah. I'll take that. Uh, all right, we got a couple more here, and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, I know you got to get out and go to work. Uh, Bob asks, outside of Treehouse Vince, who has the best pecs in the Matman family? It's, Mr. it's Deacon. Gonzo. has to be Deacon. Okay. All right. You want I'm Mr. Th- Gonzo? I'm, putting, I'm thinking Mr. Gonzo. He's all peck. That's all he works out. <laughs> yeah. He uses the electrodes on his chest and just, like, juices himself up for seven hours a day. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Last one. I'm going to see if I can get this name right. Actually, we, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Boon Chaya Vidislip. I hope I spelled, I hope I got that right. It's Ukrainian. Um, when do you think Keith Lee will come back? A couple of weeks. <sighs> Imagine they give him some bozo gimmick and he ends up in the dummy squad. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think if if Braun was trying to recruit Keith Lee, he would turn around and be like, sir, I'm not a dummy. Oh, God. And then I, Braun would be like, all right, fair enough. Where's Mojo Rowley? Rowley. You know what? <laughs> I got a gimmick for Keith Lee. Keith Lee is a very intelligent guy in real life, the real human being, right? Absolutely. And the character, too. He, he, he has intelligence. What if it's almost like a, a, a Twilight Zone type scenario? 
where he's the smartest man in the company, but everybody thinks he's an idiot. Like he, they think he's so <laughs> stupid, like almost like the pig faces, you know? And, and, yeah. uh, so he, you know, he'll, he'll have all these facts and people are looking at him like, Oh my God, he's so stupid. He doesn't, he's, he knows nothing. He's just and making it's like, all this shit up. <laughs> yeah, no, like he's like, he's like, well, you know, he'll state like some crazy fact and they'll be like, Oh my God, he's so dumb. This guy, you, know how you believe him. That's the gimmick they're going to give him. I like it. Ryback, I'm calling you out. I need you on my team. I got to make some phone calls. And he just picks up a banana. Oh, Ryback's in the dummy squad. <laughs> no, they both, you know what it is? Both holding up the phone with the cord. It's not connected anywhere. What? And then he goes, hang on. I got to take another call. And it's just a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, let's wrap it up. For all things rich, BTC 2.0 is back. Drops every Saturday. Matt Men Podcast. We've been doing this two days a week. Let's see if we'll do this again this week. Uh. Maybe two days a week. We'll figure something out. Uh, the show will be posted everywhere. Podcasts are available. I'm very tired today. I'm headed into work now. I got about 10 minutes. I got to make it to the train. So you know what? That's it for this week. See you hey, later. Guys. Peace. <laughs>